We all remember our first time. For me, it was 1976. It was at Abingdon, near Oxford. You have control, he said. I have control, sir, I replied. For the first time, I was actually in command of an aeroplane. Amazing. That plane was a chipmunk, and Airfix make one in 148 scale. I've got one. It's kit of the week. Find out what you get inside the box right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, indeed, is box opening day on the kit of the week. That kit is the De Havilland Chipmunk in 148th scale from Airfix. Now, if you're thinking about getting one of these, you just want to know what you get for your money, this is very much the video for you. If you've got one and want to know how to put it together, well, the build video will be out later this week. How will you know when it's around? Just subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell and you'll get notified of all my future content as it is published. And of course, if you enjoy it, please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts. Now, if you want to give a bit more concrete support for the channel, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online partner programs. One of these is the FX Affiliate Program. Now, if you go through the link in the information box below there, to the Airfix online store, buy anything at all, then at no extra cost to you, Airfix will make a donation to the running of this channel. You will still get your 10% club discount if you're a member of the Airfix club, and you will still collect your Hornby hobby points as well. So let's kick off then and have a look at what you get inside the box of the De Havilland Chipmunk in 148 scale from Airfix. So here's the kit of the De Havilland Chipmunk T10. As usual, a lovely piece of box art by Adam 2B showing the chipmunk in its basically its most well-known area, really, flying among the clouds. None of this VFR on top nonsense. Flying around the clouds over the English countryside, probably Essex, this one, because this is the aircraft that was in the colours of two flying school that has been uh, preserved by the guys at Saffron Morgan or the end. The four schemes are here that come in the box. This number two FTS one here. The one of the first British chipmunk from Farnborough in 1949 here, which is a bare metal aircraft. There's the aircraft from the Royal Navy Historic Flight and the Army Air Corps aircraft, which of course is the scheme I'll be doing. As it says here, 148 scale to have on chipmunk T Mark 10 and product code A04105. Very attractive cover it is too. On the side here, we have a brief history of the chipmunk. We have the fact that the kit, when it's complete, will be 164 millimeters long, 218 millimeters in span, and it comes with 84 pieces in total. Not all of these are going to be used for any given build, I should point out, because there's a few options here and there. The schemes are reprised again, A, B, C and D. The paint callouts for the schemes are here. And here it says this is a skill level two kit. Now, that means that it's not impossible to make if you've never made a plastic kit before. But it's probably a good idea if you've not made anything else, maybe grab hold of a starter kit like the starter kit Spitfire or something like that just so you get used to handling the glues and how they set and things like that but if you've made anything before you can make this kit it also comes as a token for one flying hour now if you're a member of the Airfix club you can collect these flying hours and in the future use them to get a free kit however if you aren't a member of the club or if you are in the club and you don't collect them please do consider clipping off these flying hours and sending them to models for heroes where they can convert them into kits to help former members of the armed forces and first responders deal with mental health issues that they picked up during their service 
a link to this very excellent charity is in the information box below. Please do give it some thought. So that's the outside of the box. The ends just essentially just reprieve the artwork. Let's have a look at what you get inside for your money. It's a straightforward top loading box as normal for Earthfits kits of this size. Inside, of course, we have the instruction sheet. We have a plastic bag containing the parts on three frames, I think it is, plus another bag inside with the uh, transparent parts. There's quite a lot of them. And in the bottom, we have the decal sheet for the four versions. We'll go have another look at those in a little moment. This is frame A. It contains the bottom and top halves of the wings and a couple of extra little bits. That's the pito tube. I can't remember what that is. And these bits, I believe, are for holding the engine covers open, if that's what you're going to do. Frame B comes with the fuselage, uh, the tailplane, and I think that may be the rudder. No, that's, that's the fins already built on, so these would be part of the elevators. Uh, this is the front section of the aircraft. This is the bit where it goes over the engine bay. These are the engine bay covers. That's the base of the engine bay there. Um, the uh, control columns are here. Some bits of tabs and some what and two pilots on this one which is interesting and this is frame c so we have the rest of the elevators rudders propeller the spar that that's going to be really really important engine exhausts uh, this is the floor of the uh, the cabin wheels uh, which are not going to be compressed ones so that's a pity there's not an option of compressed ones ailerons engine parts here um, seat parts um, this here interesting bit is a frame for making the canopy we'll look at that when we're making it but th this allows you to build the canopy up in I think about five different pieces and hold it all together those are the engine mounts and the undercarriage legs. Now, the undercarriage legs do come in compressed and uncompressed versions for if you want the aircraft in the air or on the ground. Obviously, on the ground, it compresses the oleos. So you've got the uncompressed ones here and the compressed ones here, which is a nice touch. The transparent parts come on frame D. Now, as you can see, actually, it's only four parts of the main canopy. So there's a a top and rear panel, the front windshield, because this can be slid back. And then there are two options. Uh, one has a sort of a sliding side window on each side, and one has a fixed window on each side. And the other canopy here is blown slightly to get a better look out with. And there are some then some lights and bits and pieces in there as well. If we have a closer look at the moulding and a closer look at the plastic, plastic is that sort of pale blue, slightly bluish grey plastic. Actually moulds really nicely. You can see all the rivet detail here. The rivets on these are raised because that's what they are on the chipmunk. Why do you flush rivet um, something going this slowly, frankly, and spend all the extra time and money to do that? It doesn't need it. So it kind of reflects the sort of structure of the wing covering as well quite nicely and also on the flaps as well there's a sort of rippling effect from the flaps as well likewise on the undersurface um, again the rivet the rivets are nicely done um, yeah everything looks jolly nice really Mouldings look pretty sharp as well. There's no flash or anything like that here that I can see. Um, the attachments to the wings, um, uh, the injector, let's see where the injector goes. Yeah, the injector kind of goes right onto the front surface or the front edge of that wing. So that's, that's going to need to um, be really careful sanding these off especially this one with the, the lip at the front. 
but um, yeah, I'm sure we'll be okay. Here again, we can have a look at some of the detail molding, the cockpit floor here, and that's okay. It's not, not actually staggeringly good, but it's, you know, it's good enough. Uh, the engine looks decent. Um, it's a reasonable amount of detail in there if you want to bring that out, if you're building the engine. Uh, I'm not on this one. I did it on my first one. I'm not going to do it on this one. The seats with the, uh, the harnesses here. And uh, the firewall. I seem to remember doing the firewall quite, <laughs> quite a lot of detail on the firewall last time I built one of these. The details all there. Um, it's maybe a little getting a tiny bit worn. I don't know. I don't know if it was this this good when it first came out or or what. Um, I can't really remember. The detail is there, but it's not razor sharp. If you know what I mean, it's not absolutely crystal. This molding, it's good. It's not bad, it's not poor. It is actually pretty good, but it's not absolutely crystal clear. If uh, it's odd, last year I would have, or two years ago, I'd have looked at this and said, well, I can even see all the markings on dials and stuff. That's really cool. But now, now having seen a lot of other manufacturers, I said, yeah, it is, but do you know what? I have seen it sharper than that. And I don't know if it's the plastic that they use that do that. And and it's it's also I've seen sharper moulding from FX kits, and this is only just about two years old, remember. But it's not bad. You know, I'm, I'm being hypercritical, and you know it's a part that's going inside a cockpit, so what's it matter? Again, the pilot figures. Now FX have made sharper pilot figures than this in one seventy second scale, and this is one forty eighth. Um, the use of the flying helmets, um, I don't know how long that lasted for. When I was flying these in the 70s, you had bone domes, actual proper helmets. Um, we didn't do flying helmets like this. Uh, we didn't do, well, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't do May West's, you know, uh, flotation devices because we're just pottering around um oxford and unless you're going to end up in a river there is no way that's going to worry you it's just again it's not as crisp as you know what, it's not as crisp as airfix do um if you get say the kit of the p40 in 172nd you can see the uniform like the 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 ties on the defiant the 172nd defiant the figures are so sharp so crisp and they're just that little bit soft here i do think either they've just blown up the mold and not worried about it you know upscaled it and just oh it'll do i don't know but it's not as crisp as it could be for 148th the instruction sheet is very much of a style from Airfix, the, the current style of doing things. Um, on here we have a history of the aircraft and some basic specifications in English, French and German on the front and then inside in Spanish and Swedish. We have some basic assembly instructions in many languages and we have the icons, what they all mean, in many languages as well. The uh, the instructions they follow the the current way of doing things, which is where the, they colour in things that you've already done. So, like for example, here you've put the compass mounts onto the base of the fuselage. So, in the next frame, they just remind you that's what you've just done, and this is what you're about to do. Sometimes that's really useful. Sometimes that's a, a bit confusing. It's like I, I know I've just put those in. Why do you need to colour them? But maybe it's just highlighting it in case you've forgotten to do it. I, d I don't actually know why they do that. Uh, decals on the inside, of course, of flaps and things like that. It's all very nice. Um, if you're doing any of the scheme, if you're doing the B scheme, then you don't 
drill these holes. There's some one millimeter holes. I think those holes are too big at one millimeter because the part's not a millimeter. What it is is there's a, an anti-spin stroke. Well, there's a straight on the back of the fuselage, a flat straight straight on the back of the fuselage, which they put on later that helps um, with spin recovery. It helps um, regularize the spin behavior, uh, makes it a safer aircraft, basically. Um, and it, there's, it's like a, a, a thin strike. We'll have a look. But one millimeter holes, they're big for the size of the strike. I think they should be about a 0.6. Anyway, that's just me. We'll have a look later. Again, here we go. Various different things being put in the fuselage. I want to plug at the back there for the wheel. Um, yeah, it's all very straightforward. Um, bits you have to cut off. They're painting green to remind you to cut them off. Engine goes together. I seem to remember the engine going together very nicely. Um, you don't have to put the engine in at all, really, but um, you, you can and, um, and just do a basic engine build just to have the um, exhaust coming out the bottom really but again we'll have a look at that during the build and there we go it's, it's all very straightforward um, the only thing that's a bit of a pain um, is the assembly of the uh, the canopy it's a pain when I first did it but now it's not now it's um, I'm sure it'll be a lot easier at the back of the instruction manual are the uh, schemes that the aircraft comes in. There's four of them. The first one here, as we've mentioned before, Whiskey Brother 585 in the colours of number two flying training school. This is as restored by Vintage Fabrics in Essex and as seen in 2020. You'll notice that the uh, two FTS colours here um, are slightly different to the ones you may remember flying in them in the 70s. The um, Air Experience flight ones, this would be grey and the outer hole, outer panel would be red. The Flying Training School one, the whole leading edge was red. Uh, I don't know why they're different, they just are. That's just a thing. The B scheme, as we've discussed before, is the De Havilland Chipmunk, the first British chipmunk, displayed at Farnborough in 1949. So it's all over bare metal, or, or all over silver anyway. Um, I don't know if it was high speed silver that they painted it in or whether it was actually just bare metal. I suspect it was painted high speed silver. Scheme C is the chipmunk as used by the Royal Navy Historic Flight at Yeovilton in 2009. These were kept on um, largely to tr help train pilots fly tail sitter aircraft so a lot of the preserved aircraft with the historic flights the sea furies and the swordfish and i think probably at the time they still had the firefly things like that were all tail draggers and of course these pilots were brought up on uh tricycle aircraft so getting used to tail dragging was one of the first skills they had to learn and then um basic air show skills uh, um they, they were taught as well and as well as being used for check flights and um aerobatic checks and for just for communication for flying from one place to another um, so this is a more familiar red outer panel gray inner panel um, but then it hasn't got the um, red and white of the fuselage it's kind of like yeah it's like a mix and match sometimes these schemes not quite what i remember flying in and finally the reader's favorite i guess i should call it because uh, about a third of you wanted this over the other two three sorry other three this is the army air corps aircraft in camouflage the colors are really badly printed because it's not brown and slightly darker brown it is of course dark earth and dark green the classic early world war ii color matching but this time it's completely wrap around like a lot of army air corps aircraft were few extra um, bits of aerials on there as well for communication. Um, probably practicing things like, uh, you know, close air cooperation, spotting, um, even uh, forward air control, things like that. This is a scheme we're going to go for. And here's the decal sheet as 
ethics are quite wants to do. There's a strip of common decals that go over all of the aircraft. These are for the faces of the propellers. I might actually paint those in myself. Um, then you've got scheme A. As is the want of airfix, they tend to have here the common decals for the aircraft. Um, the instrument panels are here. I'll check those out, see whether I can paint them better or how they're going to sit. I, I don't know yet. We'll see how we go with those. For other bits and pieces, these are the um, striping that go on the propellers. I will see how they lay down, but I may actually do those myself. You know, the yellow tips and stuff like that. I, I might as well paint them myself. These are for scheme A, the two FTS aircraft. This is scheme B, the first British chipmunk with the nice de Havilland chipmunk name here. Then scheme C, the Royal Navy historic flight one. You can see that the, uh, a lot of the markings are a lot bigger because regulations change and you have to make everything really, really obvious what goes where. And finally, the Army one, which I'm doing, which thankfully has, it appears, the fewest decals to do which is superb so there we go let's have a look at what the decals are actually like close up so here we go you can see the it's our standard half millimeter uh, propelling pencil there you see well, pressure the, the things that you're going to be able to read anyway because of the distance they're going to be on a 148 scale kit on your sideboard or on your display case they're going to be good enough the, the uh, crest of the number two flight training school is nicely enough done i'm not entirely sure you can read that but yeah who can at that range again again lift turn pull for emergency release that's obviously on the canopy i think they're good enough plenty good enough uh the registration is fairly good actually pretty good i've seen a lot worse recently um I love all these extra sort of wavy lines. Like, like you don't know that's a walking space already. You have to have a stripy red line as well to say, no, really, really do not walk outside that. Uh, again, regulations, regulations. Um, but they're clean. The colours are good. The decal colours I like. The nice blues and reds. Yeah, very, very happy. As usual, I mean, these are printed by Cartograph. They are pretty good at what they do which is why fx use them because they are very good just so i'd have a, a, a an extra quick look at the uh, instruments they do look these white lines do look out of scale to me in fact they are out of scale don't look it they are out of scale as are all of these white markings on here however I think that's because of the scale effect. They designed them that way so that they look right when they're actually in the aircraft. Um, they don't just put you know white lines on that like just f for the whatever of it. It's because they're going to look better, I suspect, in the aircraft. But we'll find out. I have noticed things like the um, the look printed 3D uh, things that go in. They also have quite prominent. Uh, markings and I think it's it's that scale effect thing there we have it now the chipmunk was the first kit I made on this channel just over two years ago it's going to be really interesting to see once I make the build video how different it is to what I used to do back in the day uh, how will you know when the new videos are around best thing to do subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet hit that bell and you'll be notified of all my future content as it is published and of course anything you enjoy on here please do give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below because every like counts thank you so very much for watching hope to see you again very soon take good care and goodbye